Good morning, Tar Heels. Wow, this is awesome. You know, I was, uh, I was in this stadium cleaning it 17 years ago for money for ROTC. From stadium cleanup to commencement speaker. Who would have thought? No one. But I'll, uh, I'll tell you a secret. Uh, I have always, I've dreamed about leading a Tar Heel chant in Keenan Stadium. I mean, I've dreamed about it. And uh, now I have the mic, and we love this place, so we have to do this. Tar! Yeah. Tar! Yeah. Tar! Yeah. Oh, so good. <laughs> yeah. I was in your shoes, and then I graduated, and I've had a roller coaster of 17 years. It's brought me in the face of the tragedy of extreme poverty and the peril of war, as well as the blessing of starting a family and the joy of creating enterprises that have helped thousands of people. And these experiences, both the successes and the setbacks, Bring me to my favorite line from my favorite movie. In the movie Platoon, a soldier is traumatically injured. He screams. He's in a place that's not safe, and his screams are putting his unit at risk. His sergeant leaps forward, covers his mouth, and looks at him eyeball to eyeball and says, take the pain, take the pain. The soldier goes quiet. The soldier grinds his teeth. The soldier survives. No one else is injured. Now, this message, take the pain, may seem inappropriate for commencement day, which is a happy day, a day of hope. But the truth is, many of life's most fulfilling moments happen with some degree of pain. Now, hopefully for all of us, the pain that we face is less extreme than that scene in Platoon. Uh, think about the all-nighters that you might have pulled to get to this day, or your hardest classes, or a breakup with someone you loved, or the loss of someone you loved. No. Pain comes in varying degrees and significance. And I don't want to suggest that pain should be sought out. On the contrary, we all want to live in a world with as little pain as possible. The challenge is that pain is inevitable, and it does not go away if you run from it. In fact, it often gets worse. Sometimes, counterintuitively, the best way to take pain out of the world is to confront it head on. So the question I want to focus this address on is how best to take the pain and make something useful, something positive out of it. How best to take the pain and make something useful out of it. This question is always important, but it is critical during volatile and uncertain times. Right after I graduated, September 11th happened. Across our country, we felt fear, anxiety, confusion. All of a sudden, we could no longer take our security for granted. You are also graduating in a volatile time. It's unclear where the world is going. Political polarization, school shootings, job displacement, Fake news, I mean, the list goes on and on and can wear you out every day. But the point is, as anxiety and volatility rise, it becomes more, manage, more important to manage through the fog of pain. So back to the question, how best to take the pain and create something useful out of it? I've worked in social entrepreneurship, the military, and business. And through these three areas, I found an answer to this question. 
The answer has three parts. Attitude, dervis, and perspective. Attitude is often the most important characteristic to take the pain in the best way possible. And I want to tell you a story about attitude. One of the most painful moments in my life led me to social entrepreneurship. I was 21 and halfway around the world. I curled in the fetal position. My stomach was heaving. I, I was freezing yet sweating. And I wondered if what, whatever it is inside my body might kill me. I mean, all I could think about was the pain. And I was not taking it well. Then a nurse named Tabitha came to see me. Tabitha lived in a nearby 10 by 10 foot shack in Kibera, in Nairobi, Kenya. I had traveled to Kibera in Nairobi on the advice of an anthropologist at UNC to better understand ethnic violence. Tabitha looked at me and diagnosed malaria, which I had read killed more people in human history than any other infectious disease. And I had taken uh, you know, anti-malarial medication, but clearly it wasn't potent enough. So Tabitha handed me some traditional medication, and she said I would be okay if I rest and think positive. You know, Tabitha's words and the medication helped. I changed my attitude, I began thinking positively, and I started to control the pain more than it controlled me. Before I left Kibera, Tabitha came up to me and asked for the equivalent of $26. She wanted to start a small business, make some money, and eventually build her own health clinic to help people the way that she had helped me. So I gave her the $26. When I came back to UNC for my senior year, I couldn't get Kibera out of my mind. With a local native from Nairobi, I decided to start an organization helping kids. I raised some money, and I returned back to Kibera. Tabitha found me and led me to her 10 by 10. But this time, she had two 10 by 10s. The second one was a clinic, and it became part of our organization, which we called Carolina for Kibera. Now, tragically, years later, Tabitha passed away. She was about as old as I am now. It was not until she passed away that I learned of a terrifying pain that she had endured but never spoken about. Her late husband had lost his mind, attempted to kill her, and then committed suicide, leaving her with three kids in the largest slum in East Africa to fend for themselves. You know, due to circumstances beyond her control, pain was an unavoidable and ever-present part of Tabitha's life. Yet she faced it with a positive attitude, with a can-do attitude. And what a difference that can make. Today, the Tabitha Clinic treats over 15,000 patients per year. It's part of Carolina for Kibera, which is now 17 years old. And Carolina for Kibera is the anchor of the largest public health partnership in a slum community that the US CDC is engaged in around the world. Yeah, it's awesome. It's great stuff. We produce knowledge that helps other communities around the world, and that Tabitha Clinic helps save lives from deadly diseases like malaria. I once heard this quote, attitude is everything. Pick a good one. Let me turn next to service as one of three parts to best take the pain and turn something useful out of it. Many of you will graduate and head into your first job. My first job in the United States Marine Corps was great, in part because I got to work with tremendous Americans from all walks of life and serve something that was larger than ourselves. One of the Marines that I served with, Sergeant Dave, grew up in particularly painful circumstances. He's an orphan. Think about that. 
to grow up without parents. Maybe some of you here have endured that pain. Before we uh, deployed, Sergeant Dave learned that his son had been born, but with a hole in his heart. Imagine the stress. Deploy on dangerous missions, knowing your newborn son is fighting to survive with a hole in his heart. Yet Sergeant Dave performed so well that the President of the United States personally called him on Christmas. How did he do it under such duress? Sergeant Dave said that he decided his son's condition was out of his control while he deployed. The best thing he could do was immerse himself in service and be optimistic because that helped him, his family, and everybody around him. That's the wonderful secret about service. Helping others helps yourself. You focus less on your own pain, and you can make more of a positive impact for others. I'm happy to say that Sergeant Dave's son is alive today and healthy. I saw him last week. It's worth pointing out as well that both service and attitude were entwined, intertwined in the way that Dave took the pain. His attitude was embodied by my all-time favorite leadership quote. It's a quote by General Colin Powell, who said, perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. Perpetual optimism is a force multiplier. <laughs> you know, optimism in the face of adversity is not easy. But if you can muster the strength and self-control to have it, you will not only get more stuff done, you can lead. This brings me to my third and final point about how to take the pain. Perspective. By the way, it's, uh, it's hot, isn't it? It's like, I, what is it, like 90 here? Feels like we're all melting. Take the pain! Sorry, sorry, that's a, that's a joke, guys. That's a joke. All right, third and final point, perspective, one last story. All right, in my first business job, it, during a, a summer before I started my MBA, I was asked to compile a list of companies. It was tedious work, somewhat mindless. Uh, I did it half-heartedly and turned it in to my boss. When he pointed out three spelling mistakes, uh, I reacted poorly. And he said, if I ever make such careless mistakes again, and certainly if I ever react in such a way again, it'd fire me. I was stunned. I tried to make up excuses. Then I called a friend, the Tar Heel. And this friend told me I better change my perspective. The world doesn't revolve around me, he said. Uh, you know, I was lucky to have that job while also making enough money that summer to pay for my honeymoon. Thousands of people would see such an opportunity and be grateful for it. Well, he was right. I regained my perspective and doubled down on the work. Yes, it was tedious but I threw myself into the grind. And years later, that boss actually became a personal investor in a business I co-founded. You know, the truth is, most of the time, pain is not accompanied by glory. It isn't life or death like extreme poverty or war can be. It usually doesn't make for a great story. Our beloved university has helped open our eyes to the world. Keep this perspective. Nurture it. It can help you better take the pain and create something useful, possibly even something transcendent out of it. And speaking of perspective, part of having perspective is being thankful for what you have. We have very special people in the stadium today our parents, and of course today we especially honor mom on Mother's Day. So parents, moms, thank you and congrats. With your child's graduation, it's celebration time. And uh, just remember, if they come calling for more money, $26 can go a long way.
I'm delighted uh, my mom is here today, along with my dad and my wife Tracy. We all met at Carolina. Uh, I love having my, my kids, Sage and Charlotte, they're five and seven here. Uh, you know, they were super excited to participate in the Tar Heel chant at the beginning. And uh, by the way, for those of you who don't know, a Tar Heel is referenced to soldiers from North Carolina, where tar was once a major industry. The soldiers developed a reputation for holding their ground in battle with such courage that others speculated they must have tar on their heels. So, graduates, Tar Heels, my hope for you and for us is that you do not run from the pain. Maneuver through the stuff that you can, the pain that's unnecessary. For the pain that's part of life, and certainly the pain that's part of making a difference. Keep the tar on your heels. Okay, Carolina, I'll never get to do this again. Can we do this one more time? One more chant. Tar! Tar! Congratulations, Tar Heels.